breaking and we're getting information now that the Silicon Valley Bank's parent company has filed for bankruptcy. The move suggests that the court-led uh, process of auctioning off units will start. Bankruptcy process will be separate from the sale of assets by FDIC. So there are two parallel processes that will start now. One, uh, because of uh, uh, the parent company now calling in for bankruptcy or filing for bankruptcy. Uh, this, this move will be separate. Uh, there will be a sale of assets by FDIC. On the other hand, there will also be a court-led proce process uh, for auctioning of units. Sakshi Bajaj is now joining us with more details on this. Sakshi, can you help us understand what this move by the parent company uh, filing for bankruptcy really means for uh, the depositors and the investors? That's right. And fresh news coming in at the moment, Silicon Valley Bank's parent company files for bankruptcy. Now, the move suggests that this will be a court-led process uh, to auction off all those units. And this will be, of course, separate from the sale of assets by the FDIC. Now, remember, Silicon Valley Bank, lender to some of the biggest names in the tech world, became the largest bank to fail since the 2008 financial crisis. And Silicon Valley Bank's new CEO, remember, reassured clients that their money was safe and startups in India at the moment, uh, at that time, were also relieved. Uh, the fact that they could access their deposits and so on. However, experts, remember, told us that shareholders will remain concerned because for shareholders and investors, it was a different scenario altogether. And now, of course, we can see central banks, regulators, everyone coming together because they want to avert a crisis like the global financial crisis witnessed in 2008. And of course, to decode this further, we have Sanjata Mukherjee, financial services expert. Uh, thank you for joining us with this breaking news coming in. Do you feel that this is a fresh move, really, to avert a crisis like 2008 for the global banking sector. Thank you so much for having me, Sakshi. And yes, you're absolutely right. Uh, right now, the way we see it uh, is that all governments and central banks are working uh, completely cohesively to avert a global financial crisis. Uh, our generation would be the generation which has witnessed the global financial crisis in 2008 when heightened distrust between institutions had led to countermeasures uh, failing, right? So they do not want a situation like that. So every government and its own central bank will do whatever it takes to backstop, right? But uh, having said that, what we do understand right now, that savings rate, uh, the retail savings, the household uh, savings and income are greater than what it was in the global financial crisis. So uh, most of the larger banks are actually becoming bigger and they're very well capitalized. This is not a credit situation. It is a liquidity situation. And the way we see it is with adequate backstopping, it can be addressed. So there is no need to panic for the retail investors. All right, but global implications of a move like this and how long does this bankruptcy process take? Uh, this will be as per process and uh, most likely the U.S. SSC, the Federal Reserve, the monetary authorities, the Justice Department will all work in hand to ensure that the receivership uh, gets the monies which have been promised by the Fed and that the change of hand is smooth and seamless. Please understand uh, what we are witnessing right now is something that has happened because of the interest rate hikes which have been very aggressive in the last one year. So it is an interim liquidity cash flow situation. It is not a credit situation. The credit quality in U.S. Uh, remains to be very strong, actually. So it is a liquidity situation for which I think the Federal Reserve is uh, working very cohesively, in fact, with the larger banks. The larger banks are being directed to take over the smaller banks uh, uh, and help them through this interim liquidity crisis. All right. Lastly, though, you know, do you think sentiment will be impacted uh, adversely by a move like this? Or do you think people will welcome the fact that these measures are being taken? Because, of course, we've seen U.S. banks collapsing. We've seen the Credit Suisse uh, crisis in Europe. So how do you think uh, the world will read this? And, of course, experts have been telling us that India's banking sector is resi resilient. But uh, what are your latest thoughts on this? You're absolutely right. Again, India's banking sector is very, very insulated from all of this. We have a regulatory structure which was established in 2019, the Prompt Corrective Action, PCA. Eleven 
of the largest PSU banks of India have been identified and put into the prompt corrective action. There's been humongous balance sheet cleanup which has happened. So the credit issue in India also has been addressed to a very large extent. And uh, the difference between India and the developed markets is we are not leveraged. You know, as an economy, we do not, and the regulator does not uh, encourage leverage. 